Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to try out Prismacolor color pencils for the first time. If you never tried them out as well and you'd like to see how they work, please stay with me in the whole video because it's going to be interesting and fun to watch. Now without further ado, let's get to the video. Materials Prismacolor color pencils are wax based, which means they are creamier than the oil based ones, polychromas for example. The wax based pencils tend to be better at burnishing and blending than the oil based ones because of their soft texture. For this video I'm going to use the set of 24 pencils. I think it has all the colors you need as a beginner artist. The paper I'm going to use is the Stratmore Bristol Triani series. It is my favorite paper because of the smooth texture. I don't get along with very textured paper and when I found this one it felt like a match made in heaven. To get a feel of the pencils, I chose to make some swatches. I was really surprised of how vibrant and creamy they are. I can already tell they would be great for drawing skin textures. They fill in the tooth of the paper quite fast if you press too hard. This can be an advantage or disadvantage depending on which type of art you are creating. At one point, you can see I created swatches for the same colors. My camera didn't record that part, that's why it happened. Layering to sharpen the pencils, I used my manual sharpener. I chose this one over a hand sharpener because of their very soft core which increases the chance of breakage. The manual sharpener does most of the work for you and avoids moving the pencil too much. To layer, I started out with a very light pressure. As I said before, these pencils can fill the tooth of the paper pretty fast. If you are not being careful and press too hard, you will end up with no more space for the next layers. This was really fun to do. The pencils are very light and you can control them very good. The pigment adheres rapidly to the paper and there is no need of too much pressure. Overall, layering with these pencils is a very easy process and you can get an even and very smooth layer. Burnishing For those of you who don't know what burnishing is, let me explain. Burnishing involves layering and blending until no paper tooth shows up through the color pencil layers. The same sequence of colors is then relayed over the entire color area. The process is repeated until the colored pencil areas completely cover the paper beneath them, allowing no tooth to show up. Overall, it basically means pushing the pigment of the pencil into the paper until it creates a very smooth, textureless area. To burnish the previous layers, I used the white pencil from Prismacolor. I was amazed of how fast the texture of the paper was gone. I didn't even have to put a lot of effort in pushing the pigment into the paper. One important tip when burnishing is to follow the direction of the pencil strokes. For example, to create the pencil layers I applied a circular movement. To avoid some unwanted marks, I had to burnish using exactly the same circular movement. When I'm using my oil based pencils, the process is much longer and you need to apply more pressure which can tire up the wrist pretty fast. These pencils are 100% amazing for drawing skin or in my case animal eyes or snouts. Blending To blend the colors, I started out by pressing hard in the corners and decreasing the pressure as I got to the middle of the area. I did that to avoid dragging the dark pigment into the light one or the other way around. I am using circular movements to spread the pigment evenly on the paper. This will help to achieve a smooth blending. You can see how fast the tooth of the paper is filled when you press too hard on the pencil. If you are drawing skin or other smooth subjects, try to avoid doing that. Instead, start from light to dark and build up the layers. This will give you time to correct the mistakes in time. To mix everything together and get rid of the texture and those chaotic marks, I burnished everything out. It was such a satisfying process as it all went smooth and fast. I used again the white pencil which did a great job, the only problem is that it will lighten up the colors a bit. This was the first time I experienced such a fast and easy way to burnish. Everything was mixed and burnished in the same time effortlessly. To darken up the area and increase the vibrancy of the colors, I added more pigment and repeated the process. Highlights Because I love the ability to easily add highlights on top of dark colors, these pencils didn't disappoint me. The white pencil worked perfectly on top of the black one. 
Normally I am using the Faber Castell Polychromas pencils and the white pencil doesn't work good at all but I am going to use this one in my drawings more often for sure. To see these pencils in action I chose to draw this beautiful blue butterfly. Honestly I don't know the exact name of the species but we all can agree it is a very beautiful butterfly. While you watch me draw this let's talk about some pros and cons of using these pencils. One of the biggest advantage is their creamy core which makes them a perfect candidate to create smooth textures. Of course, for some people the pencil's buttery-like feeling can be considered awful, but I didn't mind it at all. Quite the contrary, as it was therapeutic in a way. They are very easy to mix, blend and burnish, ideal for drawing skin or other soft subjects. I am one of those perfectionist artists looking to create a blending as perfect as possible, and these pencils helped a lot with that. Another advantage is the lightfastness. The light fast rating of a pencil determines how long it will take for a color to fade when it's supposed to light. Even if there are some colors which are rated as fading quite fast, most of them have a good light fast rating. What I like about them as well is that they are very light. I've seen other people consider this bad as it feels cheap when being held, but I don't like my pencils too heavy as it can make my hand press harder. For color pencil solvent lovers, I got good news for you. These pencils are a match made in heaven for this kind of blending. These are all the good things that came to my mind. There are probably more, but we all are different and what is good for me can be bad for somebody else. That's why the best way to figure it out is by trying them. One big disappointment in these pencils is the fact that you can't create very fine details like fur because they are created using a hard pressure, but Prismacolor pencils have a very buttery core which can be very easy to break. That's why I prefer the oil-based pencils for this kind of work. Another con is the fact the pencils feel a bit cheap and don't have a polished finished look. They don't have a lot of information on the pencils as the Faber-Castell Polychromas for example. Another disappointment for layering lovers like me is the wax bloom. This is a natural oxidation process of wax based materials. As any other pencils, you can add only a limited amount of layers but with these pencils, the more layers you add the bigger the chance of wax bloom is created. Overall. I really loved working with these pencils and recommend them to beginners as they are very easy to work with and affordable as well. I think they are around 1 euro per piece. We came to an end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you had fun watching it. If you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to be notified every time a video goes live. I am posting one time a week and graphite, color pencils and pencils art related videos. Have a nice day, bye guys!